So when people think about uh, sustainability and energy efficiency, they don't always think of the rooftop first. They make up a very large fraction of urban areas, something like 20% or so. And so their properties, such as solar reflectance, really make a difference in the climate of the urban area. There's a phenomenon that's called the urban heat island effect, where urban areas are warmer than their surroundings. And this occurs for a few different reasons. One of, one of the reasons is that cities include uh, materials that are very dark. They have what are called low solar reflectance. Uh, the solar reflectance is a property that describes the fraction of incoming sunlight that's reflected away. The hope is that the solar reflectance of roofs across Los Angeles will increase and therefore decrease the energy use associated with cooling their homes from, with air conditioning and will um, reduce the urban heat island effect in Los Angeles and also um, somewhat counter the local impacts of global climate change. A local organization called Climate Resolve put on a one-day workshop where they brought together scientists and local policymakers, and I was invited to present this research where I showed this big potential for improving the reflectance of roofs on residential homes. And the result of that conference was the first ever city level legislation requiring that all residential roofs in Los Angeles, whether they be new roofs or retrofitted roofs, need to uh, implement cool roofs. So a cool roof is a roof that has high solar reflectance and therefore reflects uh, a lot of the incoming sunlight back to space rather than absorbing it. For people with pitched roofs where you can see the roof from street level, a lot of times they don't like the way a white roof looks. So they can use other types that look dark but still reflect sunlight in the part of the solar spectrum that the eye can't see. And you can get these types of roofs in shingles, you can get them in clay tiles and metal, basically any material that you want. Another thing that's extremely important to me and has always been a big part of my life is playing music. Uh, I play the upright and electric bass. There are some kind of interesting similarities between research and music. Both require a really strong command of fundamentals, especially in the type of music that I play, which is, includes a lot of improvisation. Given that they're both big parts of my life, you know, I can't imagine life without one or the other. So I think in, in general, you know, not being uh, scared about what you're doing and, and going for the highest impact research, going for the, you know, the best music you can play, um, uh, share some similarities in that way.